Surface area is the total area of all surfaces or faces of a three-dimensional object. A right prism is like a Kleenex box where you can see we have six faces in total, all are rectangular, and we can also see that those two ends are the same area, the top and the bottom are the same area, as well as the sides. A prism has sides that are rectangular. Because the ends on this one are also rectangles, we have a rectangular prism. We could also have a triangular prism. We could have a hexagonal prism. There's different types of prisms. But in each case, we need to find the area of all faces. So I'm going to begin by saying, okay, if this is the length, this is the width, and this is the height. If I'm looking at my front and back faces, I'm going to take the length times the height to get the area of those two shapes. I'm going to take the width times the height of the three-dimensional object to get the area of those two ends on the side and I'm going to take the length times the width of that prism to get the rectangular area of the top as well as the bottom and because there's two I'm going to speed this up by just finding the area of each of those rectangles and then doubling the area so in the formula you basically want to have the length twice you want to have the width twice and you want to have the height twice each with a different combination so length times width length times height and width times height a right cylinder is like a can of soup. We have a circle on the top and the bottom. And then if we were to unravel the middle, we can see that it would form a rectangle. The cylinder is made up of two circles. So we know the area of a circle is pi r squared. And because there's two of them, we're going to double that area. And then in terms of the rectangle that we get when we unravel the soup label on the can, the base of the rectangle is the circumference of the can. So that label would have wrapped around here. And we know the circumference is 2 pi r. And then the height or the width of the rectangle is the height of the can. So we're going to multiply the base times the height. And we're going to get that 2 pi r times height. A right pyramid has triangles for the sides and can have either a square, rectangular, triangular, hexagonal base. And the apex or the peak of the pyramid in a right pyramid is centered over the shape of the base. The height of the pyramid would be represented by the chopstick, whereas the height of each triangle would be called the slant height of the pyramid. So this is the slant height of the pyramid. The height of the pyramid is from the center straight down at a 90 degree angle. Now my shape happens to be a square pyramid because the base is a square, but I'm going to pretend it's a rectangular pyramid. A square is a type of rectangle, just so you can see what the difference is. So again, we're looking for the area of all the faces. So on the bottom, we're going to have either a rectangle, square, whatever the shape happens to be. So if it is a rectangular pyramid, I'm going to find the area by, in this case, just multiplying length times width to get the area of that rectangle on the bottom. Now in terms of the four triangular faces we have here, I know that to find the area of one triangle, it's going to be the base of that triangle times the height of that triangle divided by two. I'm going to begin with this triangle here because it's a little bit easier to see. So the base of this triangle is the width of that rectangular bottom. And then the height of this triangle is the slant height of the pyramid. Now there's going to be a slant height over here as well. So I'm just going to call this slant height number two. So we're going base times height, so base times height divided by two, and because if it's a rectangular base, this triangle here is going to have the same area as this triangle over here, I'm just doubling that area. Now in terms of this one, this is going to be the length of that rectangle times slant height number one. So again, the height of this triangle is the slant height of the pyramid. And then because there's two of them, you might see that what ends up happening is when we have two halves, those essentially are going to be multiplying together to get one. So we could simplify this formula just by saying the surface area is going to be the area of the base plus the width times the slant height plus the length times the other slant height.
in a right cone, the apex of the cone is right above the center of the circle or the center of the base. It goes up at a 90 degree angle. We know that in order to find the surface area, the base of it is a circle. So we're going to have just that pi r squared. And then if we were to unravel this wrapper, so if you think about there's a certain type of ice cream cone you can get that has a wrapper in this shape, we're going to end up with a piece that looks like this. So this is what we call the lateral area. It's the area of the sides excluding the base. To determine the surface area of the entire cone, we also need to figure out what this lateral surface area is. So what I'm going to do is take this piece and I'm going to lay it inside a larger circle. So you can see that this side here is the slant height of the cone. So that's that slant height here. So I'm going to represent that with an S. And then what we're going to do is set up a proportion comparing the area and the circumference of our cone, kind of shaded in black, to the area and circumference of the larger circle, which I represented in green here. Now ultimately what we're trying to find out is this area of of the cone, this black piece, so I've got that highlighted here, we know all three other remaining pieces in this proportion that we can substitute in in order to solve for this lateral area. We're going to begin with the area of the large circle. So if this is my area of the circle, we know area of a circle is pi r squared, but the radius in this circle is represented by s. So we're going to have pi s squared. The circumference of our cone, so over here, the circumference of the cone is going to be 2 pi r, or 2 times the diameter, but 2 pi r is what we're going to go with here. So we've got that represented here. And then the circumference of my large circle in green is also 2 pi r, but because radius is represented by an s, we're going to have 2 pi s. And then over in this fraction on the right, 2 divided by 2 is 1, pi divided by pi is 1, and then in order to solve this proportion, we're going to cross multiply. So we're going to have pi times s squared times r, and then we're going to divide that by s. And then we can divide one of those s's in the numerator by the s in the denominator. So s squared divided by s leaves us with s. And so we've now got the area of this lateral area, or this piece of the cone that forms the cone. So pi pi s r, and we just kind of rearrange those and have pi r s. Now what's important to remember is this is the slant height of the cone. So that slant height is this piece here, it is not the height of the cone. So remember it's pi times the radius, whatever that is up top here, and multiply by the slant height. And while it's really difficult to calculate the surface area of a round object, Archimedes discovered that the surface area of a sphere is connected to the surface area of a cylinder. So if you imagine we take a cylinder that has the same diameter and the same height as our sphere, and we take that sphere and fit it inside of the cylinder, we do know how to find the lateral surface area of the cylinder. So we know it's going to make a rectangle, and then the height of that rectangle is just the diameter of the circle, or two times the radius, and when we unravel it, that length of the rectangle or the base of the rectangle was the circumference of that cylinder. So it's going to be 2 pi r, the circumference of the circle. And then to find the area of a rectangle, we can multiply the base times the height. And when we do that, we end up with 4 pi r squared. So essentially, the area of a sphere is about four times the area of a circle with that same radius length.